Hi, I'm Trace, and thanks for watching This Week in Discovery News. This week we're talking about our planetary neighborhood. It's getting a little crowded in here. We've got organ transplants of the future and last weekend's crazy skydive. This week we learned that scientists found us a neighbor. It's orbiting Alpha Centauri B, which is actually relatively close at only four light years away. But before you start breaking out the fine silver, there's no need to brush up on your extraterrestrial etiquette yet. No, your spoon goes to the left of your ovipositor. Yes, that's it right there. <laughs> very good, very good. The newly discovered planet orbits Alpha Centauri b even closer than Mercury orbits our own sun. It's so close that it gets to 2200 degrees there, so there's no way it's going to support life. While this planet may not hold that much interest, it may have a sibling planet that's in the habitable zone, or the area around a star where a planet can hold liquid water. Essentially, we're looking for something Earth-ish. See, every star is different, so the habitable zone is always changing. For Alpha Centauri b, the habitable zone is at an orbit of about 225 days. The planet we just discovered has an orbit of 3.2 days. That's really fast. We're probably not going to find anything on that planet. As a side note, are you even the least bit afraid that we might find aliens nearby? Not because they'd attack us, but what if we're clingy? What if we're that species? What if we're the species that writes letters to aliens and sends signals out and probes and makes movies about them and, you know, draws their picture on our trapper keeper with a little heart around it? You never know. We don't want to, nobody wants to be that species. Let's just calm down. Maybe aliens just aren't that into us. We've found 800 of the possible millions of planets in the universe, and, you know, we've still got a lot of looking to do before we could find our Prince Charming planet thing. For more on this new planet, zip over to discoverynews.com slash neighbor planet, and you can also get the lowdown on how we discover planets in the first place. Aliens may still be science fiction, and this used to be, but now we're cloning sheep, and we're performing stem cell research, and we're growing ears on the backs of mice, and all sorts of biological craziness. Sometimes biomedical technology reminds me a bit of mad science. Seriously, we're going to be growing our own organs in jars? Seriously? Someday, this might be a normal thing. Well, sir, your liver is seriously messed up, but don't worry, we'll get you a new one growing here this week, and we'll even fix that pesky gene that keeps messing up lobe three. Free of charge. For now, that's a long way off, maybe a generation or more, but the plan is on target. Right now, today, we can grow specific cells, and check this out, this woman is growing an ear on her arm. It's going to replace the one that she lost to cancer. This is our medical future. They're going to use our cells to grow our own organs, just like this ear woman. But not, you know, we're not going to have kidneys hanging off our butts or anything. They're going to grow them in a lab and then transplant them into our bodies as needed. So this method would eliminate or lessen the massive need for organ donation and eliminate the need for immunosuppressant drugs. See, the body knows that a donated organ isn't your own and will eventually attack it as foreign. But with this method, it's not foreign, it's your own organ. Of course, before we can do that, we have to learn to grow complex organs like livers and kidneys and lungs and stuff. The doctors working in this field are working so rapidly that they've already learned how to grow a whole trachea, sperm, egg cells, red blood cells, and they can even grow tissue that they use like patches on a bike tire to fix organs. This crazy science fiction come science fact world is right around the corner. So make sure you visit discoverynews.com slash growmyorgans for all the details. Speaking of growing new organs, I almost needed a new heart on Sunday because mine stopped. Felix Baumgartner jumped from 23 miles up, and though he didn't break the freefall record, he broke a bunch of other ones. He did it, man. He jumped from the highest ever. Discovery News covered the whole event live, and millions tuned in to watch him fall. First, the balloon that he was in ascended to 128,000 feet. He slid open the door, and at that point, I was literally on the edge of my seat. The Austrian daredevil leaned out over nothing, with his feet on a platform the size of a skateboard, and said, I know the whole world is watching now, and I wish the world could see what I see. And sometimes you have to go up really high to see how small you really are. And then he leapt into the void, and within a minute, he had already broken the sound barrier. That's incredible. The 43-year-old Baumgartner is a veteran thrill-seeker, having jumped from some of the world's highest buildings and even soared across the English Channel in freefall with the help of a carbon wing. But he said that this historic jump should do more than etch his name in the record books. Events like these are inspiring and exciting, and they get imaginations flowing. 
They get students interested in engineering, math, science, and in looking at the future. So let's keep these good feelings going. For all our coverage of this fantastic event, visit discoverynews.com slash stratus. So that's all for this week. To get more of our coverage, make sure that you like us on Facebook, you follow us on Twitter, and that you check out our Tumblr. You can also subscribe to our Discovery Daily Newsletter and get headlines in your inbox every morning. Subscription options and links to our social media are at discoverynews.com. Keep commenting and tweeting. I see them all. Thanks for watching this week in Discovery News, and we'll catch you next time. I feel like I sound like Barack Obama. I'm tripping over myself. Let's just calm down. Let's pull it together. <laughs> Your liver is seriously messed up. <laughs> He's got a lot of looking to do before we find our planet charming. Crazy. It was so insane. Somebody who wore this smells nice. There are a lot of planets in the sea. He's still vacuuming. Have a great time. We'll see you next time.